Now we'll move on to discuss anatomical terms. The correct description and anatomical location of key areas in the body require certain anatomical vocabulary and directions. We'll also discuss sectional anatomy. Anatomical vocabulary, the language of anatomy. This includes many root words that come from both Latin and Greek from as long as 2,000 years ago. Precise terminology is needed to describe a region of the body, the surface of an organ, or a particular muscle. In medicine such as surgery, pathology, and radiology, precise terminology must be used to accurately describe the location of the procedure, for example, a change in pathology, or a radiographic abnormality. Key regions of the body can be described using anatomical landmarks. Using this image, let's describe the different regions of the body, beginning with the head. The forehead, the buckle or cheek, and the chin make up the cranium and facial, which together make up the cephalon or head. The trunk of the body includes it beginning at the thorax, the mammary or breast, the abdomen, the umbilicus or navel, as well as the pelvis. The armpit is also known as the axilla, and the bicep region of the arm is known as the brachium. The antecubitus is the front of the elbow, and the antebrachium is the forearm. The manus or hand includes the carpus or wrist, as well as the palm. The lower part of the body. The kneecap is also known as the patella and the shin area is the crust. The ankle is known as the tarsus, and at the foot, the digits or toes, as well as the hallux or great toe. We'll use this image to describe the posterior anatomical landmarks. The upper limb is the arm, and the lower limb is the leg. The cephalon or head, and the cervicus or neck region. The shoulder can also be called the acromial. The back. The dorsum or the back is about the middle of the back and the lower back is the lumbus or loin. The back of the elbow is the olecranon. The gluteus or buttock. The back of the knee is known as the popliteus. The sura or calf and on the foot the calcanus is known as the heel and the sole of the foot is known as the planta. Here's another clinical challenge exam question. A 42-year-old male undergoes a routine physical. The patient is healthy and his normal exam is recorded. During the physical exam, a mole is noted on the patient's left antebrachium or forearm. Based on this finding, which of the following is correct? A. The mole is between the patient's antecubitus and carpus. B. The mole is near the patient's crust. C. The antebrachium is above the level of the axilla. D. The antebrachium is on his left leg or E. The patella is above the patient's antebrachium. Here's the answer. This question tests your knowledge of the anatomical landmarks in the region of the arm. The correct answer for this question was a. The mole is between the patient's antecubitus and carpus. Anatomy quadrants. Special regional terms are used in anatomy and medicine to indicate a specific area of the body, specifically in the abdomen and pelvic areas. Shown here in the image are the quadrants of the abdominal pelvic area. On the left side of the image as you look at it is the right upper quadrant. Beneath that is the right lower quadrant. On the right side of the image as you look at it is the left upper quadrant and beneath that the left lower quadrant. And the organs that correspond to these areas include the right lobe of the liver and gallbladder for the right upper quadrant. For the right lower quadrant the cecum and appendix. The left lobe of the liver and the stomach are in the left upper quadrant and most of the small intestine and the left ureter is in the left lower quadrant. 
the abdominal pelvic area can also be divided into anatomy regions. Beginning at the top where the rib cage is, is the epigastric region. Underneath this is the umbilical region. And in the pelvic area, the hypogastric region. To the left and right is the right hypochondriac region, the right lumbar region, and the right inguinal region. Abdominal pelvic regions give a more precise description because, for example, the liver actually spans across both the right hypochondriac region and the epigastric region. Anatomy also includes directional terms, such as superior towards the head or cranial, and towards the feet, inferior or caudal, anterior as the front and posterior as the back, lateral to the side and medial towards the midline. For limbs, the proximal describes the limb attachment point to the body, for example for the upper arm, the shoulder region. Distal describes the point furthest away from that attachment. Directional terms can be used to describe opposing parts of the same area of the body as well as opposite sides of the entire body. These terms can be used to describe different parts of an organ, such as the liver. Sectional anatomy is important terminology especially for radiographic images. As the body is three-dimensional, it's necessary to present planes of section to more accurately show the relationship between two parts. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is an example of a medical division that uses sectional anatomy routinely. The coronal plane is the frontal plane, and it separates the body into anterior and posterior. The transverse plane, or axial plane, separates the body into cranial or caudal, or head and tail. And the sagittal plane separates the body into left and right sections. If the sections pass on the midline, it's known as the mid-sagittal section. The body contains what are described as body cavities. The body cavities provide protection for the organs they contain, as well as separation. The major cavities of the body are, number one, the thoracic cavity, which contains the heart and lungs, and the abdominal pelvic cavity, which can be divided into the abdominal cavity as well as the pelvic cavity. The abdominal cavity contains liver, spleen, kidneys, and most of the large intestine. The pelvic cavity contains the final segment of the large intestine, as well as most of the male and female reproductive tracts.